I felt my bed shake. It was scary. It was really scary. I mean, I saw everything around me starting to shake a bunch. A quake felt across multiple states tonight on the News 4 Rundown, the impact of today's seismic shake. Plus, campaign kickoff. Why Virginia Senator Tim Kaine is launching his re-election bid months before an opponent is even chosen. And turning the upcoming solar eclipse into a teaching opportunity. I'm super excited. I never saw one before. How NASA is helping a local elementary school take full advantage of the rare event. You're watching the News 4 Rundown. And thanks for joining us for the News 4 Rundown, our newscast streaming for you. I'm Leon Harris. It is Friday, April 5th, and we're going to begin with a story that has people talking. An earthquake struck the East Coast, causing buildings to shake and rattling nerves from Maryland to Maine. The U.S. Geological Survey measured the quake as a 4.8 with its epicenter near Lebanon, New Jersey. It struck a little before 1030 Friday morning. According to USGS records, it was the strongest earthquake recorded in the Northeast in more than a decade. There have been no reports of any major destruction or injuries, but New Yorkers say the quake shook up their morning activities. I mean, I was just laying in bed and suddenly like it pushed me to the side. We felt the floor shake and I said, what is that? We're not over the subway. And she said, Oh, I wonder if it was a quake. I was just actually in my room and I saw everything around me starting to shake a bunch. At first I actually thought it was a construction making a mistake or something, you know, hitting the infrastructure. And then like about 30 seconds later, once it stopped, that's when I realized, oh wait, this is actually, this is actually pretty legit. This is a real earthquake. Oh, it was legit, all right. Local and regional officials from cities in the earthquake zone said inspections have been launched to ensure that buildings and bridges and other infrastructure were not damaged during the shaking. Earlier today, our Onyang Yang spoke with Manushar Shirzai about the impacts of the quake. He's an associate professor at Virginia Tech and the director of Virginia Tech's Earth Observation and Innovation Lab. Take a look. So we've seen earthquakes like this one on the East Coast before, but not many. Do you see this as a trend? We don't think that this is a trend, but certainly earthquakes are rare on the East Coast. But there is always a possibility for earthquake in every location almost. It came as quite a shock to a lot of people. We even had viewers uh, tell us saying that they felt it. Why and how does an earthquake travel so far? It's, it's true. Always feeling that uh, shaking of the earthquake can be, can be uh, frightening. But in this particular case, we don't expect to 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 expect to have major aftershocks coming after this main shock, and also we don't expect major damage associated with the main shock. This this earthquake is a warning and reminder that uh, East Coast, despite all of those uh, geological condition, can still bear earthquakes, but probably not as big as those that we expect on the West Coast. Nevertheless, earthquakes of such magnitude are expected every once in a while on the East Coast. All right. Maybe we should be ready <laughs> for another one at some point. Mana Chair Shurzai <laughs> with Virginia Tech, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. A 4.0 magnitude aftershock hit later this evening. No reports of any injuries or damage. Time now for a look at some of the other stories we're following for you. We're learning more about the teenager who was shot and killed on the platform at the Brookland Metro Station Thursday. The victim, 14-year-old Avion Evans. He was an eighth grader at Ida B. Wells Middle School. His mother told News 4 that Avion was on his way to an after-school program and had stopped to talk with a friend at the Metro when he was shot. A Bladensburg man faces first and second degree murder charges after police say he killed his mother at the family's apartment earlier this week. Lorena Royster's body was found after police conducted a welfare check at her home. President Joe Biden was in Baltimore today to get an aerial look at the damage after the key bridge collapse. He's learning more about the plans to repair it and also meeting with the families of the six construction workers who were killed in that disaster. And a group of students and Greek letter organizations will continue their lawsuit against the University of Maryland. The lawsuit claims that UMD infringed on the civil rights of thousands of students when the school suspended Greek life for a few weeks last month and prohibited them from speaking to each other. 
As D.C. leaders wrestle with balancing the city's budget while facing a nearly $1 billion shortfall, one of the programs that Mayor Bowser has targeted for a massive cut is an emergency rental assistance program. The mayor says it's being abused by people who don't really need the help. News 4's Mark Seagraves takes a look at the controversy surrounding the program known as ERAP. Thousands of district residents have been able to stay in their homes over the past years thanks to help from D.C.'s emergency rental assistance program known as ERAP. Mayor Bowser has proposed slashing ERAP's budget by more than half, going from $68 million this year to $20 million next year. Our economy is growing more slowly than it did, uh, and we have to make some adjustments. Just like families are making adjustments in their own households, um, they expect us and the government um, to be smart with our budget. Bowser told the D.C. Council she believes some people have been abusing ERAP. At a budget hearing today, Councilmember Robert White pushed back at Bowser's claims. What we heard from the mayor this week was that people are gaming the system. Uh, there is no evidence of this. There is no evidence of fraud. What there is evidence of is that rents are going up much higher than incomes. There's evidence that evictions are up. There's evidence that legal programs that assist people in avoiding eviction are all now overstretched. So what we are seeing is a housing crisis, not a crisis of people gaming a system. We're going to see more people in shelter, which is going to cost taxpayers more money, and we're going to see more people displaced from this city. But Laura Zeilinger, who oversees the program, tells News 4 Councilmember White is wrong. There is fraud in the program, so we want to make sure that we're, we're addressing what we've seen not work in the program in instances like that, and that we're making sure that the people who it's intended for are able to access it. We asked Seilinger if the Bowser administration is sure people have been defrauding the rental assistance program, are they referring those cases for criminal prosecution? We do not have the capacity at this point I mean, and we are making some, we, we, you know, will be making some referrals. We will be asking for some support with some audit for the program. We're following the letter of the regulations around eligibility, but we, and, um, and we will be doing, people are, you know, self, when you self-attest, you do, you know, swear under penalty of perjury what you're in, you know, that what your income is. And, you know, there, there may, those consequences may catch up with people. In the district, Mark Seagraves, News 4. The Bowser administration says that a big part of the reason that the program is being cut is because millions of dollars in federal funds that have been used in the past years are no longer available. D.C.'s first ever medical respite program solely for women is now open in Southeast. It's called Hope as a Home, and it serves women who don't have housing and need medical care but aren't sick enough to need a hospital stay. Up to eight women can stay there at a time, typically 30 to 60 days. Latoya Ramsey is the director of this medical respite program, and she says it's the only option of its kind in D.C. for just women. We provide their basic necessities when it comes to food, toiletries, and just genuine care compassion, right? Um, in addition, they're able to be linked with additional resources provided through Volunteers of America, such as substance use disorder and also behavioral health. This program serves as phase one, and next month in Northeast, another house is opening up to serve as phase two, where women can stay on track and find housing. To Virginia now, where Senator Tim Kaine is wrapping up a campaign kickoff swing through Northern Virginia tonight. His GOP opponent won't be chosen until a June primary, but we know tonight which candidates filed on time to make that ballot. Northern Virginia Bureau Chief Julie Carey takes a look at why many think Kane may face a more competitive race as he seeks a third term. Hey guys, great to see you all. Senator Tim Kane yeah. launching his reelection bid months Crap. before an opponent is even chosen. <laughs> the Alexandria stop today, one of 10 he's making across the Commonwealth this week. Kane won his 2018 race by a big margin, 16 points. Political analysts expect the Virginia Senate seat to remain blue. Still, Bob Holsworth says it's likely to be a tighter contest for Kane this time around. I think the biggest worry for Tim Kane and Democrats would be complacency, largely because Joe Biden carried the state by 10 points in 2020, and Tim Kane had an easy win. And so the Democrats really have to 
uh, convince their voters to be enthusiastic about this election if it's not a battleground state. Good afternoon. Holsworth says another challenge for Kane and other Democrats, Joe Biden's low approval ratings, which could hurt, especially with independent voters. With no opponent of his own yet, Kane taking aim today at the former president. We are up against the greatest teardown artist in the history of American politics and a disgraced ex-president, Donald J. Trump. The GOP Senate field coming into sharper focus now. Of the eight Republicans initially planning to seek the nomination, just five met yesterday's filing deadline. Four of them from Northern Virginia. Perhaps the best known of the group so far, Hung Kao, who lost the 10th district congressional race in 2020. I think it's gonna be very difficult for the Republicans to nominate a candidate who is going to be well known throughout the state and who's going to have the funding to actually run a very significant campaign here. Kane's already raised more than $10 million. The best funded potential challenger, Hung Kao, raising 1.2 million. Still, Holsworth says Kane's early start makes sense. Tim Kane, I think, is being smart of getting out here early, campaigning early, uh, raising money and showing that he's not taking this race for granted. A race that will move into an even higher gear on June 18th when the Republican nominee will be selected. Reporting for News 4, I'm Julie Carey. There will also be key congressional primaries in June. Early voting begins May 3rd. Still to come with the News 4 Rundown. All right, we know everybody loves a good Taco Tuesday, right? They're delicious, though, any day of the week. Un Yang takes us inside a local establishment serving up tacos with a twist in today's food fair. Coming up, a lot of stores offer price matching, especially on big ticket items. But have you ever read the fine print? You may save a few bucks or you may wind up with a financial headache. What to look for before you buy to make sure you get the best deal. Next on News 4. Hey there, Tommy McFly here. We're always looking for ways to help you get your news on your time. Have you signed up for the new Forefront newsletter yet? Oh, you gotta do it right now. Each read is a deep dive into one of the stories that will save you money, keep you safe, help you and your family. Trust me, each of these stories from a News 4 reporter is gonna be the thing that you're talking about with your friends on the weekend. And speaking of the weekend, my favorite newsletter, the weekend scene, obviously. The scene team and I curate the best things to do around town, restaurants, festivals, events, those funky, cool, only in DC things delivered to your inbox once a week. Signing up, it's free and easy. NBCWashington.com slash newsletters, or you can scan the QR code, enter your email address, check the newsletters you wanna receive, and boop, you've got mail. One more way, NBC4 is working for you. I'm Tracy Wilkins with the News 4 I Team. Hey, I'm Ted Oberg from the News 4 I Team. I'm Susan Hogan with the News 4 I Team. Working for you means thinking like our viewers think. Telling you that something's wrong isn't enough for the I Team. Telling you how to fix it or how to get around those problems. We're a part of you. We are connected to you. Working for you means to me that I am able to be there for folks who have tried so hard to solve their own problems, and so often they can on their own. We are the folks who have a platform that can tell your story in a way that you sometimes can't. When you're done spending some time with the I-Team, we've not only helped you understand what's going on in this town, but we've also helped you find solutions, find a way around the problems. I'm one of those investigative reporters who feels like an advocate for the people I have the opportunity to serve. That's what working for you is. As summer slowly approaches, you're probably already looking for items you're going to need for your next getaway. With the prices for things like food, clothing, and even luggage rising, buying from a retailer that offers a low price guarantee seems like a no-brainer, right? But consumer reporter Susan Hogan warns a lot of conditions are buried in the fine print. Low price guarantee and price match are a favorite among consumers. They offer flexibility and a promise that you'll get the best deal possible if a better one comes along days after. But there's a caveat. If you dig into these guarantees, you'll often find lots of different terms and conditions. And those terms and conditions from retailers often include limiting the number of stores they will price match with or that the competitor has to have had the product in stock and ready to ship 
while other companies will price match with stores like Amazon, but not its third-party sellers. They won't match prices at Costco and Sam's Club or BJ's often. Uh, and some of them won't match prices if they're on sale elsewhere, which is a weird thing to, to require. However, Consumer's Checkbook says when the policies line up with the consumer, those savings can be easy to get. But make sure you understand the store's policy beforehand. So we looked at 100 major retailers and found that, you know, most of them do have price matching or price adjustment policies. Uh, but they're so varied in terms of what they'll do and when they'll do it and what for what items and which competitors uh, that unfortunately you do have to go case by case and determine, you know, which one is going to be best for me. Now, another buying strategy consumers can use is buying from retailers with a generous return policy and low price guarantees do work. The key, though, is to read the fine print and really understand that these policies are not the same across the board. Back to you. All right. Thank you, Susan. The Kennedy Center is hosting a hip hop and series where performers will explore the genre's relationship to jazz music. This tribute pays homage to Duke Ellington's 125th birthday. Hip hop legend DJ Jazzy Jeff says that jazz is hip hop's older brother. And he said that hip hop and jazz are joined at the hip. It was, you know, from the trajectory of being disrespected as a music form, um, the improvisation that of, of both of the genres. Um, and then when we started going through records and sampling, the first thing that we started grabbing was a lot of our old, you know, uh, uh, dad's jazz records to kind of be the backbone. It's a match made in heaven. You can check out Jazzy Jeff, Ravi Coltrane, and Rakim at the festival on April 19th. A local taqueria is gaining popularity and expanding even outside our area. Today, Taco Bamba opened up its 14th location in Fairfax Lakes, Virginia, and recently returned to D.C. Chef and owner Victor Albisu created unique menus for each location. Onyang has more in today's food fair. People have been buzzing about Victor Albisu's upcoming restaurant called Taco Bamba. Taco Bamba started in yes. a DC pop-up, and here we are at City Ridge in a brand new location. How long has it been, and how do you feel now that you're come full circle? Oh, that's interesting. I, I'm, um, yeah, it's been 11 years since our first pop-up, since I wrote that first menu, and that, that menu then transferred over to Falls Church, um, and then I messed that one up a little bit too. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's been a while, it's been an amazing journey. It's been an amazing journey of growth, um, it's uh, as far as feelings are concerned. I, you know, I don't. I, you know, I don't feel too much about it other than a lot of. Uh, I'm very impressed with the people around me uh, and uh, and how we've been able to um, support and kind of call us around this idea that is Taco Bamba. It's a. Uh, it doesn't exist without everyone's contribution, without everyone's growth. We talk about team members that you know um, and how they've grown. That's the only way that we are here. I'm really impressed with them. I'm really impressed with my team, our team, and how we, how, how we're able, how they're able to deal with me, and how, uh, <laughs> you know, and how I do things. Like I told you, you know, I, you know, the first menu just came about the day of, right? So I kind of carry that same, I carry that same, uh, um, that same way about me with every single store. Go okay. straight on there. Is that enough salt? Yep. Okay. Uh, a little bit more. More salt? A little bit. Okay. There's different menu items, there's different, there's different volumes and music and vibes and locations because we didn't want to be pigeonholed into one thing. I, I mean, I, 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 you know, I, I could never imagine scaling one menu. That for me would be like, no thanks. I'm, uh, you know, I'm out. Get somebody else to do that. So. The DC Taco Bamba doesn't have the same menu as the Falls Church Taco no. Bamba as the Rockville Taco no, Bamba. They don't have the same menu, the same floors, the same artwork, the same vibe. Um, you know, uh, people walk into the Falls Church uh, or Vienna or Landmark or Springfield for that matter and all the other ones. Um, you know, they're all evolution of the brand. They're all the next album of our, of our band, let's say, right? 
There you go. I know we got the Taco Bomba right on that. And so for us, it's very, uh, it's very clear where our success comes from. It comes from challenging ourselves to constantly evolve. Um, you know, we've had a couple stores that evolved into a certain direction. We wanted City Ridge to match this area, to, to be, um, um, you know, uh, something that beautiful, lovely people like yourself come in and, and feel, feel comfortable uh, in this environment and with a big patio and all this kind of stuff. This is Juju the Smash Burger that I made myself. Mm. How'd you do? Did you do all right? <laughs> That's great. It's delicious. Victor's on to a good thing. Taco Bamba is expanding quickly. It's doubled the number of locations in just two years. Albicio and his team opened up in Nashville last month, and they're going to soon open up a spot in Richmond. Check them out. All right, when we come back, we're counting down to Monday's solar eclipse. Megan McGrath will join us from a Tacoma Park Elementary School with a look at how they're using this celestial phenomenon as a rare learning opportunity. Plus... Still ahead in your weekend scene, put on those Eclipse glasses. We've got the start of those solar celebrations, plus where you can see more than 2 million flowers and get some great pics too. I'm Tommy McFly. It's on the way on News 4. These are quite dark. Hi there, Molette Green here every morning on News 4 Today. I'm working to share your good news stories that empower. This is Random Acts of Kindness Day, doing something good for perfect strangers. That's what it's all about. Stories that strengthen. This is so very special, and they have something wonderful planned to honor healthcare heroes in the community. Stories that lift all of us up. We believe that everyone deserves to eat. Anytime someone purchases a pizza, we're donating one away. Spotlighting our neighbors who are working to help each other and make our community even better. Tonight's big college fair. An opportunity for students to apply to more than 12 colleges and universities free of charge. And I want to share your stories too. Tell me what's happening in the community by emailing this address. We would love to hear from you and watch us every morning from 4 to 7 on News 4 Today. We're working for you. Knowing that we have an impact when we tell our stories is, it's huge. One story in particular that we did was about front overs, the blind zones in front of your big SUVs, right? I'm a mom, I drive a big SUV, and I had no idea that there's a blind zone in front of my vehicle, not just a couple of feet, we're talking upwards of 16 feet. And this story that we did when we actually lined up little kids with a mom behind the wheel. Do you see anything right now? Nope, I don't see anything. The blind zone, a startling 16 feet. Wow, that's a lot of kids. We had Senator Richard Blumenthal from Connecticut actually watch our story and was blown away and decided he was going to write legislation. And for me, knowing that we had a hand in legislation that maybe could save lives, my gosh, you know, that's... There's, it's, I'm speechless. The St. Mary's County Animal Shelter says it's pausing adoptions and they won't be taking in any new animals unless it's an emergency case. This move comes after an outbreak of a contagious upper respiratory illness impacting several dogs at the facility. The shelter is still doing testing now to figure out exactly what type of illness that is. Shelter staff are quarantining animals with symptoms and they're doing some extra cleaning to be safe. The shelter says it will only admit new animals on an emergency basis to manage and contain the outbreak there. If you are still trying to figure out your weekend plans, we have got you covered. It's going to be a good weekend to get outside and Tommy McFly breaks it all down for you in the scene. Everything this weekend will be eclipsed by, well, Monday's eclipse. Make sure you're looking at it with your glasses, though. You want to be safe. Wow, these things are dark. If you want to get started early, Saturday, the Smithsonian's Air and Space Museum's got you covered. So we'll have all sorts of activities to help people understand about the eclipse. For instance, we'll have a simulator where you can uh, see what the eclipse will look like from your own backyard anywhere in the U.S. 
worth coming so, to check out. Uh, it's absolutely worth coming to check out. That kicks off at 10 a.m. We've also got an entire Eclipse roundup on the NBC Washington app. Monday afternoon, live continuous coverage. I'll be on the National Mall for the Smithsonian viewing party. But if you subscribed to the Weekend Scene newsletter, you would have seen that on Wednesday. Plus, the cherry blossom celebrations, those are continuing. The National Gallery of Art is celebrating spring this Saturday in D.C. Great for kids with story time, art activities, face painting, and performances. Pedal Palooza in the Capitol Riverfront in Southeast D.C. Check that out. And there's also a cherry blossom tea party in DuPont Circle. Well, you couldn't pick the cherry blossoms. You can take home some tulips from Burnside Farms Festival of Spring. Just head to Noakesville, Virginia and surround yourself by more than 2 million tulips and daffodils in bloom. Instagram opportunities out of this world. The week-long Words, Beats, and Life Festival is wrapping up with a free Jazz and Blossoms Sunday in Franklin Park in D.C. It's going to feature um, a number of musicians, including Diggable Planet, Sun Ra Orchestra, um, Casa Overall, and Madison McFerrin, along with local go-go band, The Jogo Project, which is a blend of jazz and go-go. Um, and so we're really excited because that, that event brought out 7,500 people last year. That's Mazi Mutafa, who started Words, Beats, and Life, a D.C. hip-hop-based arts education nonprofit over 20 years ago. I'm Tommy McFly. Have an awesome Eclipse weekend. A dinosaur fossil at the Smithsonian's National Museum of Natural History is celebrating a major scientific achievement. The fossilized skeleton of the Jurassic dinosaur Allosaurus now is considered the standard for the entire species. This distinction makes the specimen the single physical example that researchers will refer to when describing new fossils of Allosaurus fragilis. The Smithsonian says this 20-foot predator terrorized other dinosaurs during the late Jurassic period, some 150 million years ago. All right, space lovers, listen to this. A standard of time is being created just for the moon. The White House has directed NASA to establish a unified standard of time for the moon. This move comes as the United States aims to set international norms in space amid a growing lunar race. The space agency is going to work with other parts of the U.S. government to devise a plan by the end of 2026 for setting what it called a coordinated lunar time. And finally, tonight excitement is building ahead of Monday's solar eclipse. Many kids in our area are going to be in class during the big event. And News 4's Megan McGrath shows us how one Montgomery County school is turning this eclipse into a teachable moment. Oh, is this awesome? Yeah. Why? Yeah. We are going to see this. It's a rare teaching opportunity because solar eclipses don't happen that often. And the timing of this one is perfect. Monday afternoon at the end of the school day. At Rolling Terrace Elementary in Tacoma Park, they're turning the experience into a unique science lesson. We've watched videos. We've actually gone on the NASA website and they've looked at the time. They need to know the timing. And then we've um, looked at the glasses and how we're going to wear the glasses and why we need to wear them to protect our eyes. How excited are you to see this eclipse? 100%. Maybe we are going to see this. Posiblemente nosotros vamos a ver esto. Rolling Terrace is a two-way immersion school, so the students are learning about solar eclipses in both English and Spanish. And the kids are... Super excited. It is exciting, and on Monday afternoon, the school is holding a big watch party. Around 3 o'clock, we'll, we'll be heading out to our blacktop. And with all of our students, we've invited the entire community to come out. There will be glasses for everyone um, to witness this once-in-a-lifetime event. I'm super excited. I never saw one before. What are you expecting? I don't know. Like, I've seen pictures, but I, I don't know what it's really going to be like. While an unknown now, by Monday night, these young students will have seen their first solar eclipse. Their teachers hope the experience will spark a larger interest in science. I think it's a huge motivator for our students and will actually probably increase more engagement in the science curriculum after this. And of course, a big solar eclipse watch party means you gotta have a lot of glasses, and they do. A teacher contacted NASA, and NASA came through donating 10,000 glasses to the event. Megan McGrath, News 4. All right, way to go, NASA. Now here's hoping they can find a way to make those glasses fit those kids. 
Be sure and stick with News 4 for coverage of the eclipse, folks. News NBC News rather kicks things off for us on Monday at 2 p.m. And then at 3, our special coverage begins right here on News 4. Storm Team 4 Chief Meteorologist Doug Cameron is going to be joining us live from Indianapolis inside the Speedway there as he experiences totality. That's going to do it for the News 4 Rundown. Thanks for joining us on this Friday. You made it to the weekend. Enjoy it. I'm Leon Harris. We'll see you back here on Monday.